All right, Shalom. I'm going to start by giving all the praises, glory, and honor unto Yahweh, Bashim, Yahushai, Bashim, Arachak, Wadash. Double understood the elder apostles and bishops of the great millstone that rule well. And as always, peace, blessings, and salutations. Until the four elect tabernacle of David scattered abroad throughout the earth. And I'm, uh, I was want to land back off the elder, Manatha Zagba, in which, uh, you know, he had did a live going into that whole flea doctrine, you know, where you, we must physically flee Babylon if you want to be saved. And also, um, a lot of uh, unlearned Israelites, they use the vision that uh, Abraham had, uh, you know, which indicated that his uh, descendants, all right, uh, his seed, there would be uh, slaves in Egypt for 400 years. And afterwards, they would come out with great substance. And a lot of Jake interpret that as meaning we're going to be in America for those amount of years. And afterwards, we're going to leave, you know, on planes, we're going to have passports and uh, we're going to get reparation and in, in which, you know, we've been dealing with this doctrine for what the last four or five years. You got to be, a, you know, you got to be a slow belly if you're still trying to teach that doctrine. All right. And um, you also don't know your history if you believe that um, Judah only got here at, in 1619. Um, you had slave ships as early as the 1500s. All right, actually come over here that brought uh, Jake over here. So they really didn't officially begin in 1619. Now the bulk of us came on uh, in 1619, but that wasn't the first. All right. So you know that that doctrine is off. All right. So um, what does it mean to flee? Right, because uh, some people they believe that we're supposed to physically flee Babylon. Now the prophecies say, let's go here real quick. Let's go to um, Micah, the uh, fourth chapter. And we're going to read the uh, the 10th verse. And it says, be in pain and labor to bring forth, O daughter of Zion. Right? And uh, we know that the pain is just a metaphor for, you know, sorrow. All right. The fact that we're going to experience uh, hardship, tribulation, and especially in, in this society, you know, we're in the land of our captivity and we're getting ready to be released. But before we get released, you know, we got to go through the contractions of, you know, the the, the, the troubles that the Lord's going to send upon this place, you know, i.e. famine, i.e. pestilence. All right. Uh, persecution, wars. Okay, economic hardship, etc. All these things are going to occur. This is like a woman in travail. For now sh uh, shalt thou go forth out of the city, and thou shalt dwell in the field, and thou shalt go even to Babylon. And that's where we're currently in Babylon, where both Judah and Israel were oppressed together. All right, where we were exploited, where we were uh, made captives. Where a lot of us were put to death, the blood of the, of the saints were shed here in Babylon. And it says, there thou shalt be delivered. So this is going to be the place of our deliverance. And also the other places where we were driven and scattered. But the main salvation, all right, where we will be uh, delivered is right here in Babylon. All you got to do is read uh, Revelation uh, 11. All right, it talks about that great city, which is spiritually called Sodom in Egypt, wherein our Lord was also crucified. It talks about how the nations were merry and giving gifts to one another because these two prophets tormented her. So they rejoiced over us being spiritually dead and captive to, to them, where they, you know, they made us spoils, served themselves of us, etc. You know, kept us in a a, a spiritually mummified state we were you know dead from the neck up we were dead in our sins didn't know who we were but then something happened that you know put fear on these nations the lord returning us back to who we are all right it says in the land of our captivity we will remember ourselves i also remember the name of the father and his son 
-hmm. And now we have the eyes to see and the ears to hear. So the Lord, what he, 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 he put his spirit into us and we standing upon our feet. Right. And we getting ready to be delivered because the very next verse, it says that, you know, they they're basically uh, they heard a voice say, you know, come up hither. And they ascended up into a cloud and their enemies beheld them. And then there was a, a great earthquake that happened right after. So this all coincides. That's why you got to understand these prophecies. All right. Because otherwise, you're you know, if you're still pushing this. You more than likely are just regurgitating what you heard, and it's an old doctrine is 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 been put put to, to put to rest, you know, years ago. Brothers and already then uh, handled that that particular matter. Okay, so we shouldn't be still uh, teaching that. It says, "There thou shalt be delivered; the Lord shall redeem thee, redeem thee from the hand of thine enemies." All right. Then the Lord's going to do it by way of uh, the chariots. All right, we're not going to uh, deliver ourselves on uh, commercial planes and shit. Okay? Because if the enemies hit an EMP, you saw in that movie, them planes going right down. Nose diving right into the ocean or on land. You're dying. You're, you're done. It can happen at any, at any moment. So that's not how we're going to uh, get up out of here. Okay? Anyway, um, the elder was going into a Micah 2, in which we always bring this out, but we don't bring this out to mean, you know, we need to physically uh, get up out of here, you know, because of, you know, what we're going through here. Because, hey, the curses is going to follow us wherever we're at, because we're, we're Israelites. No matter where we're at on the earth, the curse is not going to stop until the Lord comes. All right. So when we bring this out, Micah 2 and 10, it says, Arise ye and depart, for this is not your rest. Because it is polluted, it shall destroy you even with a sore destruction. And, you know, dwelling here in, 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 a, in America, which is the land of confusion, it will destroy you. It will confuse you. You know, it, 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 it makes one insane. You know, spiritually disturbed because of all the madness that, you know, you have to uh, be programmed with and learn. You got to learn nothing but lies. And this devil is constantly feeding you with misinformation. He's constantly deceiving you. All right. You know, the image of the beast. You know, you got all the, 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 the confusion. You be, you, you know, they speed it, spoon feeding you with uh, the, the, the alphabet. Uh, you know, the, with the with the rainbow, taste the rainbow. All right, gender confusion, uh, uh, women equality with men. Uh, you can be whatever gender you want to be whenever you feel like it. Uh, you know, dealing with uh, pronouns. You better call me by the right pronoun, or I'm I'm gonna I'm press charges. It's all confusion. So if you hear too long. You will be corrupted, all right? It, it, you, it, 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 this place is very polluted, okay? This, is ain't, this ain't our rest. We, on this side, we're not going to win. So it's best for you to just focus on the things pertaining to salvation, all right? And flee basically the shadow of this world, all right? Was that in Second Ezra, the second chapter? This is our second address two and verse uh, 35. And it says, I'll start at 34. It says, and therefore I say unto you, O you heathen, and this is talking about Israelites. we are being referred to as the heathen because we were in, um, in a Gentile state of mind, right? That hear and understand, look for your shepherd. And our shepherd is Yahweh Shai. He shall give you everlasting rest for he is nigh at hand. That shall come in the end of the world. And that's and you know, he's he's gonna come at the end of the world showing you that uh when when the Lord returns, what empire, what nation of people are gonna be ruling? Are you the answer is uh you could read it in the in the book of Daniel. 
Daniel, the, uh, the second chapter. All right, that, that rock, that stone cut without hands, that's going to break in pieces the, the, the toes of, of um, the beast. That's the same um, beast. All right, in uh, Daniel, the seventh chapter. All right. And it's, it's, it's that, that fourth beast, that final beast. And also in Revelation, it's the same beast uh, uh, that have uh, seven heads and ten horns. You see? And then, of course, America stemmed from out of that. So Esau is going to be the ruling class nation when Yahushai comes in, in, the, in the earth. You can uh, link it up with... Um, Second Ezra six and nine, but Jacob, uh, it's like, but Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. So the Edomites will be ruling when Yahushai returns. All right, and Esau is our our main enemy, and that's who we need to be delivered from. It says, "Be ready to to the reward of the kingdom, for the everlasting light shall shine upon you forevermore. Flee the shadow of this world." Receive the joyfulness of your glory. It's like, yeah, of your, of your glory, I testify my Savior openly. All right, and we testify of his name, which his name is Yahweh Mashiach. That means he saves or he delivers, and Mashiach means anointed. So he's the anointed Savior, deliverer. So flee the shadow of this world. That doesn't mean to, I mean, where are you going to uh, go to another planet? You think you, this body is made... To leave uh, this realm, so to speak. No, so it doesn't mean literally to you know flee this world. It means to basically come out of it spiritually. All right, uh, your 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 way of thinking, your way of living. Don't live after the manner of this world, like Paul said in uh, Romans the twelfth chapter. Be not conformed to uh, this world, but be transformed in the renewing of your mind. All right, matter of fact. When you go here to uh for that word depart, the word is uh yalak. And it says in the in the definition, it says to go, walk, come, to go, walk, come, depart, proceed, move, go away. It says to die, live, manner of life, figuratively. All right. So in other words, your old man that was according to this world must die. And your manner of life is after the new creature, the new man, or the new woman in Yahweh Shai. All right? And once you walk after Yahweh Shai's example, patterning yourself after the after the, uh, the gospel, you're dead to this world. So when the Lord re returns, you'll, you'll be uh, uh, spiritually removed from this world, so you won't be judged with this world. You know? And you're going to inherit everlasting life. So in this truth, you, you know, you, you, you actually die and you become uh, alive in Yahweh Shai. Because the manner of, of, of life, like it tells you, was that in first Peter, the fourth chapter, that you no longer uh, live your life according to the lust of the flesh. And then that's where, you know, you're going to have, uh, you know, problems, you know, people that knew you best, family members, they're going to uh, speak evil of you, you know, because you don't uh, walk with them with the ac the same access of a uh, riot. You know, you're not, uh, you know, attaining these uh, abominable uh, banquets, you know, these uh, abom uh, idolatrous feasts. You're not being a damn drunkard. You ain't in that holiday spirit. You know? So we got to come out of these the, the ways of this world so you don't be polluted because it'll destroy you. You know, we got to flee sin as fleeing from a, a serpent. Or, you know, your sins will, will catch up with you. And you don't want to be partakers of the sins of Babylon because the judgment had reached unto uh, the heavens. And a lot of our people that don't want to leave this world behind, they're going to die and be judged in, uh, according to this world. All right. 
our eyes are set upon the things of the heaven. Matter of fact, let me get that in uh, was that Colossians? It's Colossians 3. And uh one it says, If then, if you then be risen with Yahweh Shai, seek those things which are above where Yahweh Shai sitteth on the right hand of the most high. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. For you are dead and your life is hid with Hamashiach, Yahweh Shai in the most high. So that's where your mind should be at. That's that's how you flee, you know, and depart from from, from this uh this world. When it says arise ye and depart, yeah, you set in your, your your mind and your affection, all right, on the, the kingdom of heaven. Where you know that, you know, according to uh Second Peter, it's gonna be a new heaven and a new earth wherein dwells righteousness, and you're gonna get to sit on uh thrones and rule. You're gonna get to have, you know, you get to be partaker in, in the Lord's dominion. You're going to get to uh, be joint heirs with Yahweh Shai. And we're going to help govern uh, the world. Judge these nations, man. Enforce the law of the Most High. Be a kingdom of priests. So that's where your affection should be. And not on this, this current world that's getting ready to pass away. You know, the fashion of it is, is going to pass away, man. Okay? So... That's how you actually flee this world. That's how you uh, arise and depart, man. That's how you flee Babylon. Spiritually. Okay? Your, your mindset is different. You don't think like a, a, a typical westernized individual. Okay? So, that's it on that. Let me uh, finish this one. Second Ezra uh, 2. And uh, verse uh, verse 37 says, O oh, receive the gift that is given you and be glad, giving thanks unto him that led you to the heavenly kingdom. Arise up and stand. Behold the number of those that be sealed in the feast of the Lord. You know, this is that, uh, that wedding ceremony, all right, with the Lord rejoining with uh, his bride and him being a bridegroom. All right, we're going to meet together in, in, that, in that ship, that cloud. All right, and uh, Ezra saw the vision of all those who made it. All right, you had the 144,000 and you also had the, uh, the one third. It says, which are departed from the shadow of this world and have received glorious garments of the Lord. Okay, so these, these people, they, they departed from the shadow of this world. Okay. And, um, you know, they came out of great tribulation and, they, you know, they were pure. There was no gal found in their mouth. And they gave glory to a uh, Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai, man. That's how we getting up out of here. All right. And then and, and these other nations, they're going to be amazed at the strangeness of it all. Like, you know, we thought these guys were just some, you know, mad typical bums you know who 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 we thought was uh misinterpreting the bible but turned out these men were right all right and and you know we're going to uh be uh re delivered in a miraculous fashion and this is going to uh eclipse uh the first deliverance all right when we uh was was delivered out of uh, Egypt Let's get a. Uh, let's get Jeremiah sixteen. Jeremiah sixteen and fourteen. It says, "Therefore, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that it shall no more be said, the Lord liveth that brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt, but the Lord liveth that brought up the children of Israel from the land of the north." And we're in the northern country right now, North America. The Lord's going to bring us up out of here. And from all the lands, whether he had driven them. And I will bring them again into their land that I gave unto their fathers. You try to go to the land right now. War is getting ready to happen. 
that that ongoing war between uh, Ishmael and, and and Amalek, that shit is about to is is, is about to is, is boiling. It's about to spill over, and all in na- all these nations are getting getting dragged into a war over those two countries, these two nations fighting, which they're all fighting over the land that belonged to us. That was promised to our uh, forefathers. So you shouldn't even uh, be back in that land no way. And then the ones that are there, a lot of them are, are being faced with deportation. So it ain't meant for us to uh, try to go back on our own. You're going against the grain. And something might happen to you. All right, so... The prophecy is telling you that this is this is going to be the place of our deliverance and then also in other parts of the world as well. But it's going to be the main place of deliverance because in the fashion that we were brought over here and the way that we're going to be going out, we came over here on slave ships. We're getting ready to go back on chariots. All right. And we're not going to uh, have nothing with us. These bodies are going to be shed because our bodies are going to be changed in the twinkling of an eye, right? We're going to uh, uh, put on uh, immortal. We're going to put on uh, incorruption. So not only is the the, uh, the substance here in America is going to uh, be destroyed because we know that this place is going to go up in smoke, but also these bodies are going to be left here too. So not even these bodies that we're in is going to go. So how could... Um, Genesis 15 and 13 talk. Uh, how could that apply to America? It says that they came out with great substance. We ain't bringing nothing with us. All this shit is going to be destroyed. All right. So this is just land backing, you know, off of this uh this live here, flee Babylon in the 400 years doctrine going off which you are going off all right we didn't and, and we've been here well over uh, 400 years now so that's that's not uh accurate and the flee babylon doesn't mean to physically flee babylon some of y'all watched that uh from from hebrew from hebos to to from uh hebrews to negroes uh documentary and you thought it was a uh, profound information, you know. But even that dude, Ronald Dalton, he, he, he the Lord, the Lord didn't uh, give him uh, the Holy Spirit. He's not a prophet to understand how how, how everything is going to go. You got to uh, listen to the prophets, man. The prophets are supposed to break these things down to you, not just any old dude who gathers information. So you know, that, that that's pretty much that. And like the scriptures say, you got you got to study to show your uh, self approve unto the Most High. All right, you, you got to really uh, digest these uh, scriptures and learn it, and lean not to your own understanding. And then also beware that you got a lot of false prophets out there as well. That's why it says in First John uh, four and one, you know, try the spirit by the spirit whether they be of the Most High. Because many false prophets are going out into the world. So there's a lot of uh, dudes out there that's paid to sow confusion and, and mislead our people. A lot of misinformation agents out there, you know, disguising themselves as uh, men of the Lord. And they all are going to get, uh, you know, they're going to be destroyed. It's up to you to, de to make that discerning decision on... You know, who's teaching the truth and who isn't. So, anyway, with that, I'm going to give all praise, glory, and honor to you. How about Shai? And to the next lesson, Shalom.